Hi, Bob Green here, volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So I have been preparing some more analysis of the Lion 2 reactor, and I thought it was good to pull this particular part of my work out of the up-and-coming presentation because it's to do with uh, correct determination using EDS and other possible techniques for uh, looking for peak overlaps and techniques for that. I want to take you through a technique which I've learned over the last week which can help identify potential errors in um, assessment of which elements may be in the reactor ash and how we can potentially look for other spectral lines to correctly determine or other techniques to find what is actually in the ash as it were. What I want to draw your attention to first is this, which is some analysis from the uh, Lion 1 reactor. Here's the Lion 1 reactor. We're looking at this little area here. And this was in the tractor beam video, uh, which is on our YouTube. And it was showing on what this, was this cupric um, Cu2O oxide, uh, some other elements. And it, it's very interesting because we only seem to have a problem determining what the elements are in Lena ashes. There doesn't seem to be any problem looking at the materials that went in there and determining those as exactly what they were sold as. Uh, sometimes there are uh, impurities in there, which the EDS determines, but it only comes uh, after Lena reaction, like is uh, seemingly going on in the Lion reactors, that we really start having some challenges uh, in finding out what what uh, the elements are. Anyway, one one thing that was quite interesting is it, it seemed to have this ytterbium here. So this this uh, uh, cyan color here. Um, there seems to be some ytterbium. And uh, when I published this, obviously I made a question mark because I'm not certain that it is ytterbium. And other people have uh, written and said, you know, I'm finding ytterbium. Have you got to the bottom of that? And also in the recent publication by the Sapphire Group, uh, they also had some uh, potential ytterbium in there. Now, I do have a potential explanation for this, which will be part of O'Day. However, just to carry this forward, uh, there is um, another area where we had a problem, or seeming problem, was with this jewel here. So this is a feature from Lion 2. I've got it in this little container here. This is a sample jar. Uh, and we were looking at this white uh, incrustation on the inside there. This is the outside, and this is this uh, silicon dioxide quartz, fused quartz, which has gone this rose, beautiful rose color. And there was this white deposit on the uh, inside. And we looked at that, and uh, this came out as uh, silicon dioxide, as one would expect. And also there seemed to be this tungsten in here. Now, uh, there's a issue. You can see here the tungsten looks very close to the silicon and so I investigated this some more and I came up with this page here on the internet which is talking about uh, energy peak overlapping in EDS spectrum and it's interesting because it actually gave the silicon and uh, tungsten overlap peaks as a classic example. And here we can see that in EDS, uh, uh, with the compound uh, tungsten silicon alloy, which is uh, one of the alloys, if you go into the P table here, which is easily uh, accessible on um, through Google, and you go to compounds and you hit tungsten, uh, you can go and see uh, that tungsten combines with silicon here, and uh, uh, you can go and find out information there, WSI2. Anyway, so uh, they give this example here, and they are referring to the fact that uh, for this uh, peak down here, the full width half maximum WF, uh, FWHM uh, on EDS kind of like spans across the silicon and uh, tungsten uh, various peaks. And so it can't really determine what that is in this instance. And so it gives an error. Whereas there's this other uh, technique called WS, which is wavelength dispersive X-ray uh, spectroscopy. And what this technique does, it actually counts the individual X-rays that come out, and you get a very much closer, uh, um, sort of much more resolution. And so you can see the silicon 
uh, and W uh, peaks that would normally get confused on the EDS. So I'm hoping that we will be able to use uh, this uh, scanning electron microscope at uh, SciTech Nano in Brno. Uh, and this has a wavelength dispersive spectrometer, WDS, attached to it. So we should be able to go back and look at uh, this encrustation and determine whether it really does have uh, any tungsten in there. And that would be very inter interesting because according to the analysis of the starting materials, there is no tungsten in the reactor. So that would be very good. Uh, but uh, there's another thing that we can look at uh, on the data that we have here, and that's when the peaks uh, are not there at the higher energy levels, which they don't really appear to be. But they might be, you know, uh, we might not have the right amount of energy coming on uh, to the sample from the, the electron beam. Uh, uh, but it doesn't really appear that they're there. So it, it really does look a bit like silicon oxygen, but WDS should be able to pick that out. Now, uh, in this uh, particular uh, page, uh, they have a link to a spreadsheet, uh, which I will uh, give a link to in the description of this video. And that spreadsheet is really rather cool uh, because what it does it allows you to uh, insert into these two columns here, say silicon and tungsten, and it will then highlight in the list the uh, x-rays uh, that come back from the various things. So you can see there's no conflict here, the silicon's on its own, but the silicon and tungsten, if you go down to here, uh, you can see here 1.83, 1.832. These are all very close, uh, and the tungsten is right in the middle here, here with this particular uh, X-ray coming back. So this is where the kind of confusion is coming uh, when we look at uh, this uh, uh, maybe confusion band here, which is also talked about uh, in this uh, energy overlap here. So, so there's a couple of ways <clears throat> we can uh, look for uh, problems <clears throat> and fix them. And one is to uh, look for higher energy peaks and, <clears throat> and see if they are there <clears throat> in something that's determined at a lower level. Or to potentially use the wavelength dispersive x-ray spectroscopy. Now, looking at the other thing that we had here, if we go and type in ytterbium, so we go <coughs> ytterbium and aluminium here, uh, you can see there's no conflict at this low low energy, uh, but if we go up, go up, here we go, so there's this problem right here with uh, aluminium and ytterbium, uh, there's a bit of a, a crossover peak here, now we know that there's aluminium in the uh, Lion reactor because we have aluminium on aluminium oxide on the uh, <coughs> core tube. You see up here, this is aluminium oxide, and so <coughs> it could be the aluminium that's uh, getting in the way there. Uh, and so we probably do need a WDS to fix uh, um, and make it absolutely certain that this is not something to do with a, a, a miss uh, automatic detection. Uh, so yeah, and, and, and up here at these higher energy levels, there's there's no confusion, so uh, there's no aluminium here, so um, perhaps uh, we can look at these higher energy levels under EDS, and, and uh, because these are the primary peaks of ytterbium, and uh, be more certain that it is not ytterbium. So for those that think they found ytterbium, uh, and we were not sure, and we were very clear about that uh, when we presented this by... Uh, putting a question mark there, uh, that there is a couple of ways to verify this. I would like people, when they look at uh, our data and other people's data, to maybe come to this chart and, and um, this spreadsheet and see if there's any potential interactions that might be going on when EDS has been used. Thank you very much for your time.